Well, you're only asking the question that I get asked the most often. The question is, and everyone would love to have that crystal ball and say, yeah, and you told me, David, so, you know, and you're wrong, and people do like to tell me when I'm wrong. It's human nature. But I will give you my best uh, shot at where I think silver's going to go, and it'll be a long answer, but most of my lectures won't be here at this show. I do a chart of where I think silver's prices will go. And I use palladium's price as a proxy for the silver price. And it's not the price, but it's the chart of palladium because I want to give it a solid idea of how markets move, especially small markets like the silver market. Basically, markets go from a psychological perspective. They start off with pessimism, skepticism, optimism, and euphoria. Now, pessimism is when people like myself and Warren Buffett and a few others are buying silver at the bottom of the market. And there's so much pessimism out there that everybody knows you should never buy silver your entire life because it'll never go anywhere. That's pessimism. And very few people are buying it. And then you get into skepticism where it actually starts to move up and it goes up and up and up and it starts to look pretty good, but then it falls back. And that is, ha ha, I'm so smart, I'm so glad I didn't buy silver because look, it just went up for a little while and it's fallen back. And maybe it fell back to a higher price, but not that substantial. And we can give an example of that. I lectured all over the world and said, here's a chart of silver, and once it breaks 555, no one knows how high is high. And that's the truth, no one would. Well, we know today what it was, and at that time it was $8.40. I told my readers to get out at about 740, but that was after the close of the market. It actually opened higher on the next trading day, so they would have got out around 760 or so. And it went all the way up to 840 and only traded there for about three days. And then it gapped down substantially. So I'm, I've been very good at selling in the strength and not trying to get the exact tippy top, again, which is an amateur's game, not a professional's. And then it fell all the way back down to 555 right where it started, but it only stayed there a day or two, and then it started back up. The point being that these markets are not only hard to call, but they're hard to analyze. But once you get through that and it started moving up again, now you're getting into the skepticism. It gets back up to 840, and then it's 9, and then it's 10. I remember being asked to write a big article about silver. Will it make $10? And at the time, a lot of people thought, you know, I don't think it'll ever make 10. You know, and of course it did, and I never got around to that article, but that's of course years ago. So that's skeptical, and the minute it makes 11 and 12, and people are still skeptical. It's like, well, heck, you know, silver's 12, but what's 12 on an inflation-adjusted basis? It's not that meaningful. Silver? Who invests in silver? So that's, again, still the skeptical phase. So then it moves on further and further. And then you start to get optimism. And that's probably the phase we're in now. Now, not only is it psychologically a good phase to invest in and you're not too late, it's the longest run of the phases. This, from Elliott terms, is the third leg up. <clears throat> or the third wave, I should say. There's a leg up, and then there's a down or a consolidation, and then there's another big leg up, and then there's another consolidation, and then there's the blow off. We, I believe, no one will know until the end, that we're in that third wave up. And that means a lot more participation by institution and individuals. It's the strongest and the longest running. So that's optimism. People start to become confident about silver, gold, precious metals investing, mining stocks, mining companies, commodities, all those things. And the psychology starts to move from stocks or bonds or currencies into those sectors. Not that they haven't been the last decade, they have, but the participants the past decade have been very few relative to the amount of money that's out there seeking things of safety and capital appreciation. So that'll take place. And then you get some consolidation and you'll get what's called the euphoric stage. I call it a manic panic buying phase. This is where the tops are made, and they usually happen very rapidly in all sectors. And this is where, as the old adage goes, the shoe shine boy is giving you that stock tip. This is when your friends that hated silver all the way up until it hit $80 call you on the phone excited as they can be and say, guess what, Alex? I just bought some silver and I couldn't be happier. 
When that happens, you want to start looking for an exit. You don't want to pick the exact top, you want to get out. This time around, I think it might be difficult, and I want to emphasize the word might, because it depends on what's happened in the financial markets, what you want to move into. If you want to move into something that's still a tangible, or you want to go back in something that's represented by a piece of paper or not. And I really don't know at this point in time, but what I do know is throughout history there are always undervalued assets. So certainly there will be places to move out of the precious metals and into another sector. So price-wise, I'm on record as saying we'll see silver at $100 an ounce in U.S. terms. I also think we'll see the gold-silver price ratio favor silver. Uh, beginning of August, we're at 68 to 1. Today, we haven't done the calculation. I can't do it in my head, but we're probably around 55 to 1 right now. So just in a couple of months, silver's gone from a ratio to gold, 68 to 1 to 55 to 1. So it's really ramping up versus gold in a short two-month time frame. Now, if things slow down, the ratio could spread wider again. Top of the market, I think we'll see 16 to 1, the classic ratio, or the monetary ratio, as I call it. We might even get close to the natural ratio, which is roughly 10 to 1. That's the highest I see silver relative to gold, but anything can happen in these markets. I still do believe strongly that silver will outperform gold on a relative basis. In other words, on percentage terms, you do better in silver than you would in gold. But again, coming back to one of the earlier questions, I do believe everybody should own both.